Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am, of course, uh, standing in my garage today. <laughs> I'll let you start to come on board this morning and um, give a shout out to each other. I'm going to spend uh, this morning's reflections outside in my garage uh, as the wind is just howling. And uh, it's as if I'm standing in a whirlwind this morning. And I suppose you are too, in more ways than one. And that's sort of what I want to kind of focus in on today as we move into our time together, <clears throat> is an old uh, Hebrew story. Um, it's in the Old Testament called the Job. And, uh, and by the time we finish up our time together this morning, we're going to spend a little bit of uh, time reflecting on that story of Job. And in the end of that story, it is uh, the divine or God that speaks to Job out from the whirlwind. So I thought, what, you know, what perfect place to be standing outside in the whirlwind and, uh, and dealing with all the uh, environmental factors as we spend some time together this morning. Uh, why the, well, first, welcome everybody. Uh, as, you, as you log on, be sure to shout out to each other. Just say hi so we all know you're here. Um, I'm going to keep rolling no matter what happens, uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, why, why the garage today? Well, this is the end of my uh, first week of my vacation. I got a little two-week vacation here, and the first week was spent doing projects around the house, so I spent a lot of time in the garage <laughs> and uh, doing the hard work. And the next week, uh, we hope to get out into... Uh, uh, along the coast to kind of live into nature a little bit. But this first week has been uh, all here in the garage doing work uh, around the house. So I thought, what a perfect place to uh, stage uh, this week's uh, time together is in this space. Um, for those of you who were on last week, uh, my week's vacation started with a visit from Arden Strasser, and we had a great interview with Arden. And my apologies for the letdown in technology. As many of you know, uh, it's been really tricky to navigate some of the tech around these um, live feeds, and we're going to try to do better with that. Um, so when I get back from vacation, uh, we've been working with a consultant to try to iron out some of the um, kinks in this process, and we hope to kind of reconstruct that uh, in July, so you have a better experience both through um, Facebook Live and through Zoom as well. So we're going to try to do that um, when I get back from vacation after the next week and see if we can't iron some of that out. So uh, welcome to all of you who are here. Um, I want to start off today uh, with an image that I want to both uh, begin with and kind of invite you into this kind of image or frame. And then I, I hope to end with that same image. And to do that, I, I, I'm i going to use the funnel. <laughs> I'm using all just the nuts and bolts stuff today, right? And I want you to imagine yourself kind of as this funnel. And, and I've been thinking about sort of what I feel like these days, and it feels a lot like this. Right at the point of the funnel is the little me and the little you this one individual. And what it feels like these days is there's just so much that's getting put into that funnel that has to squeeze through the little me and the little you. If you think about all the things that have just been um, cascading down upon us, it just seems like we're in this mode of having to take on so much. Um, this week, we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Pride, right? And, and, um, and we reflect on all that we've um, processed together about what it means when we think about sexual orientation or gender identity. And I want to honor all of the years of struggle for all of our sisters and brothers as they have uh, fought for and cried out for a place in society, no matter their sexual orientation or gender identity. That is weighing on me this week in a, in a beautiful way um, to honor that, that that falls into the funnel. As well, you and I know we've been facing over 400,000 deaths because of the coronavirus around the planet. The, the dealing with this global pandemic 
it's in that funnel as well. In addition, we know things like police brutality and the Black Lives Matter movement, that too is on our radar screen. It piled in there. The economic and the uh, environmental disasters that we seem to be struggling with, that's all. It feels like everything's coming down the funnel right now. It's all going to channel through little me and little you. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about being overwhelmed by all that. And that for me, and maybe for you too, as all of that comes streaming in, sometimes I just have to let it sit for a while, like let it bake in the oven, let it sit inside my soul long enough for me to kind of begin to understand it or absorb it. And so today I want to kind of pause and allow you to think as well, you know, what is what is coming down in the in the funnel that sort of channels into who you are these days? What's that feel like for you? You know, what what's the experience of that like for you? And just to hold it for a moment and at least on a Sunday morning for 30, 40 minutes to just be present for the the vast amount of complexity it seems like you and I and the world are coping with at the moment. And just to be mindful of it, to be attentive to it. So wherever you are, I'm just going to invite you to kind of picture yourself as that metal funnel, right? And imagine um, some of that in the world that has found its way into your life that you are coping with and dealing with, whatever it happens to be. So let's just take a moment of pause to be present for that together before we get going this morning. And I invite you to just take a deep breath out from the swirling wind that uh, is a part of our environment this morning and just pause for a moment and acknowledge all that has come your way. Within this experience of life, we are all holding so much, it seems. How are we to be present with it all? As it moves through our very bodies and our souls, our community, as each of us as individuals try to hold all that swirls in our world, How will we live in, with, and through it all? May this time together kind of offer us some handles along the way. So welcome. I'm glad you're here. I was, um, this week I watched the um, NPR, NPR, PBS NewsHour, and David Brooks and um, Mark Shields always have their commentary on Friday. <laughs> I swear, I've been watching them comment on what's going on in the world, and they too even seem overwhelmed. They've been doing this for a lifetime, and yet they seem like they're just like, oh my gosh, it's like too much, it's too much. So where do we go from all this? Well, the first thing I think um, I wanted to remind you of is, you know, allow whatever you're experiencing in life um, to, you know, you have to kind of be with it for a while. And a few weeks ago, I talked about that and I would continue to encourage that, right? Just to kind of let it sit. You don't have to react right away. You don't have to respond right away. You don't have to figure it all out. You just have to be with it, allow it to be in the center of who you are. That's your the kind of your sacred oven, right? Let it sit there and be okay with that. You don't have to be in a rush about it. Um, that's important. But today I also want to reflect on what it might mean or look like to kind of move into solidarity with all that is going on. So there is a, there is a way, I think, for us to kind of internalize all this, but there's also this kind of capacity 
for moving or falling into solidarity with what's going on. And I, and I picked the word fall into solidarity intentionally because I think there is, uh, and I've experienced this myself, I hope to reflect on it a little bit today. There's this way in which you have to um, fall away from one way of being and kind of land in a new space. It's almost like you drift into solidarity. You, you, um, uh, you dive or fall or, or, or move into solidarity with um, uh, other people's life experience in a way that's transformative. And I want to think about that today, particularly in light of the 50th celebration of pride and the whole uh, journey that many of us went on as we fell into solidarity with those who shared a different kind of sexual orientation or gender identity than, than we grew up with. And how that um, movement opened up a kind of different paradigm in, in which we understand ourselves collectively along that great broad spectrum. I was, I was thinking that when I first started that journey myself, um, you know, and I thought as we as a congregation um, wrestled with this issue as well, the first wave of it was just a, a kind of an awareness piece that, wow, there's people who orient differently in the world than I do. That myself, who identifies as kind of as a gender of male and being heterosexual, you know, that's kind of my identity that I, I thought was sort of normative, I begin to awaken that that's not everybody's experience. And then the question becomes, well, is that okay? Right? And I remember taking a lot of time, um, both listening to stories of other people, um, hearing them talk about their own journey through their particular way of orienting, orienting into the world, their, their sense of gender identity, um, not understanding it fully, uh, struggling with uh, the nomenclature, the language, the whole um, LGBTQ, uh, I and A, all of the you know, different terminology, slowly internalizing it, listening to the stories. And I will tell you that over the course of time, I began to feel a kind of a paradigm shift happening as I began to fall into solidarity with those people. And the only reason I was able to fall into that sense of solidarity is because I understood their stories. I was attentive to the journey that they had been on long enough that I began to have this paradigm shift. And then in the heart of that paradigm shift, I began to see that it wasn't me and them, but we, we're all kind of bound together in a, in a deep and wide sea of diverse expressions of sexual orientation and gender identity. In a sense, I had to understand myself inside that broad spectrum as part of the human family in all of its expressions of identity. And, and as I did that, my, my paradigm shifted. I didn't have to fix somebody. I didn't have to change my mind. I had to go through a paradigm shift. And when that paradigm shift happened, all of a sudden I had a different way of relating to people whose sexual orientation or gender identity is different than my own. And that's what I want to explore a little bit this morning um, by using the story of Job. Because I think what we're kind of having to ask ourselves here is how do we how do we go through a job-sized paradigm shift we're not we're not going to fix all of life's problems we have to see life differently and there's probably no better story in the hebrew scriptures than the story of job Job had everything figured out. You can read the book. It's a long, long book. So you're probably not going to make it through the whole thing. So I'm going to give you a quick summary of it. Job had life all figured out. He really did. He was on top of his game. Uh, Job had a beautiful family. He had wealth. Uh, he was a religious person. He had his entire paradigm figured out, and he worked that paradigm well. 
And then one day, Job's world begins to fall apart. And Job, over the course of time, loses absolutely everything. The paradigm through which he understood and operated in the world let him down and his world completely fell apart. Think about Job being overwhelmed by the whole funnel, right? It, it, everything came down to Job all at once and it all just came crumbling down around him like, uh, uh, you know, like um, Humpty Dumpty falling off the wall, right? He just had a great fall. And throughout the book of Job, all of his friends gather around him to try to tell Job that um, the reason why he fell um, is linked to the paradigm. They wanted to maintain the existing paradigm and explain to Job why his life fell apart by maintaining the existing paradigm. And the whole book of Job is his friends trying to explain this over and over again. It gets really boring, but it goes on and on and on and on. And Job will not listen to any of them. He refuses. His three friends, he's like, no, 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 this can't be right. By the end of the book of Job, God shows up on the scene. And God shows up uh, out of the whirlwind, right? Out of the great whirling of the, of the wind, God speaks and what happens in that closing um, uh, couple of chapters of Job is God basically tells Job, look, you've been operating out of the wrong paradigm. But the world, it seems, cannot be um, kind of cleanly packaged in the way in which you've packaged it. The world is a wild world, Job. There are things about the universe that you will never, ever understand. That you cannot control it all. It's not like a, a, a zoo with all the animals, you know, in their cages that you get to wander around and observe. It, it, it's, it's, it's much more wild. It's much more volatile. It's much more organic than you can ever imagine, Job. And in a sense, Job has to awaken to a new paradigm. In the end of the story... Job returns back to life, not by um, solving the problems of the broken paradigm that he was experiencing, but by adopting an entirely new one. That's the challenge I think you and I are having to face. That we're not going to be able to fix all of the problems that are broken. What we're called to do is to awaken to a different paradigm, a different way in which we see each other and the world around us. And in the awakening to that paradigm, we're going to be able to find new ways forward. That's, that's what I think the answer is. In some ways, it's a little bit like the funnel. All that we're experiencing in the world coming through the little me, at some point we have to kind of reverse the funnel and find that the little me and the little you actually rests on this broad, broad, broad experience of life that we have to incorporate in a different way. We have to kind of turn our world upside down. And in some ways, that's what religion has always been about. All the major religions are a call to a paradigm shift. And we can live into that paradigm for a while, but I'm telling you right now in the world in which we live, um, there's a new paradigm that's moving, that's stirring, like the winds that swirl around us. How do we find our way into solidarity with all of the diverse voices that we're hearing these days? Diverse voices calling us to think about how lives matter in a new way. Diverse voices that call us to rethink about how we um, imagine health as a global community. Voices that are crying out about um, uh, the extinction of species at a mass level that are indicators that our ecosystem is under strain 
we are going to have to reimagine our life in relationship in the world in a completely different way. And in some ways, religious people have the tools to do that. One of the tools, I believe, is allowing it to kind of sink inside of you and, and just live with it deep inside as long as you can to kind of let it process. The other one is to kind of live in solidarity with the experience of others. In my next um, iteration of uh, vacation, um, the plan is not to spend time in my garage doing projects around the house that are frankly wearing me down, <laughs> so I'm ready for a break, but to get out into the wilds of nature. And so Lori and I are going to head up to the North Coast and spend some time up there. And the hope is that um, kind of living in... Um, in a pause with the natural world uh, will just give us a new sense of, uh, of uh, renewal, um, some space. And as I do that, I'm going to use um, the poetry of uh, Wendell Berry as a guide. And I want to just read this poem to you today as, a, as an invitation to you as well to imagine what it might be like to, um, to allow your spirit to rest within the wild, not to have it all figured out, not to, not to somehow solve all the problems, just to live into the wild for a while. That's what vacations are all about. I've been tracking a few people on Facebook and I have to admit, I've been watching Facebook and I've been my, what do you call it? My feed, right? I just pass over everything. And then when I see somebody who's out in the wilderness, I pause and I take a deep breath alongside of them, knowing that whether they're on the John Muir Trail or out along the coast or up in Yosemite or in Desolation Wilderness, that those places of wild kind of invite us into new frontier. Oh, I'd long for that. Here's The Peace of Wild Things, a poem by Wendell Berry. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, then I go and lay down where the wood drake rests in its beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time I rest in the grace of the world and I am free. Isn't that a beautiful poem? So for the next week, uh, as I journey into the wilderness, I will try to rest in the wild. This kind of space that invites you to feel as if you're held in something that's grander and more complex than the little you or the little me. That's the story of Job, I think, is that, you know, we don't have the world figured out. We are here to attend to this gift of world, to honor its diversity and its unfolding in a way that invites us with our full spirit and our full bodies to be present for it, to invite us into a new way of possibly seeing world and each other. Where will that lead us is the question. Where will that lead us? What is the work that needs to be done when we awaken to those moments. That to me is the great challenge. I'm so delighted uh, that you too are along for the ride. So today, as we um, wrap up, I want to, uh, I wanted to keep this short because I am on holiday. Uh, I wanna guide you to two links today. The first one in the feed today, my life uh, Facebook feed is a Martin playing a special piece of music in honor of the 50th celebration of pride. I, I am delighted to share that with you, and I want you to 
listen to that piece with this kind of framing. I was talking to a person who was um, in San Francisco in one of the earliest pride parades. And she said to me that those early pride parades were filled with anger. People were angry and they were taking to the streets in those early pride parades, crying out against the injustice that was taking place towards people with different sexual orientations or gender identities. Well, I marched in a pride parade of late and they are a celebration, a celebration of diversity. And people are walking in solidarity with one another in that pride parade. It has turned from a, a parade of anger and, and frustration to a, a parade of joy and celebration. That's what can happen when the paradigm shift takes place, right? People are able to move into a new way of being together. Boy, I tell you, I pray that we can do the same thing with all of the issues that seem to be uh, moving down that funnel and moving through uh, the human experience. So celebrate today by listening to uh, the gift of music that Martin shares with you. And then the second piece in my feed for today um, is a piece that I've been working on with some folks in our community about how we can um, stand in solidarity with all who grieve around the planet for the waves of loss experienced as we deal with the coronavirus. We have lost so many lives, so much wisdom, so many relationships, so many people around the planet. How can we but pause for a moment and just, just be in the solidarity of grief so that we can be mindful of all that the world has had to absorb as we continue to move through this global pandemic. So I invite you to grab a candle and to use that piece with your family, and maybe sometime in the evening, you don't have to do it now, but um, whenever you feel like you can um, kind of calm yourself down and be with all of those who we've lost to honor their lives, we sort of offer that up as a gift to you. And and of course, my gratitude to uh, Laura Zucker, who wrote the music for that, to um, April Bell, who um, put together the whole video. Uh, that's in the feed, and we'll post that on our website as well. So a couple of um, kind of internet journeys for you to take on this uh, particular day. I wanted to um, wrap up today with uh, the closing lyrics of the song that Laura Zucker wrote for that piece that I've invited to you uh, to observe. She writes this, and let's, let's, let's use this sort of as our closing piece today. In every corner, far and wide, when all of life draws oxygen, we see and we grieve alone inside, and yet we breathe as one. We breathe as one. We breathe life into humanity. We breathe life into community. For I am you and you are me. So let us breathe as one. Amen. All right, everyone. Well, uh, I'm off on another week's vacation. I pray that you have some time to get away and uh, both, you know, let all that's happening sit inside and then be present for world in a way that allows it to kind of invite you into maybe a new vision of how we can live together. A few announcements um, before we go today. Uh, one, I want to do a shout out to our post-COVID-19 or whatever we're calling that group. Uh, kind of the group that's working on how we might get back together physically. And in August, uh, you'll find that we'll start hosting some events on site out in the courtyard. Uh, so watch for information on that. We'll continue to do the live feeds on Sunday morning as well. So that will be a part of our experience as well. In July uh, on the 8th, I'm going to start a Zoom session using the Gospel of Mark and a little different format. So a little less about kind of what's going on for me and maybe you and more about how does Mark uh, approach um, the challenge of moving mountains in his own time. 
So that will happen on July 8th. Uh, also, again, another shout out, uh, delight that we've got a tech consultant now that's sort of helping us figure out the technology. Hopefully this went smoothly this morning. <laughs> it's gone all right. Um, but we hope to get better at that as well. Um, and then just a uh, um, uh, last shout out that if you do uh, spend some time with the uh, video that we cut, A Moment to Grieve, uh, please share that as broadly as you can. Uh, now is the time to kind of invite, um, you know, friends and family and loved ones uh, just to be present for all those who are grieving around the planet at this time and to just bear the weight collectively of that experience. Okay. So thanks for uh, being with me in my garage this morning. As you can see, I didn't clean it up for you. Uh, and as you can see, don't don't think you can get your hands. I just had to get a new router. So my old one broke down. Um, so thanks for hanging out with me uh, this morning. And uh, blessings on the, your summer as it continues to unfold. As you, in a sense, uh, feel the channeling of all that's going on in our world moving through you. And then this invitation to see yourself resting on all the possibility that is inviting us into a different kind of relationship with self, with each other, and the natural world around us. Peace.